Okay, so now uh, we're in a position where we want to align the system. But what do we need on hand to do that? Well, we need the cuvette, the alignment cuvette inside the reservoir. That's done. We need the system to be on. So that's done. And the software on. That's done. We will need this set of Allen wrenches, specifically the smallest one and the next one. So the 1.5 and the two. We also need these cards to block some of the sheets. I always keep my maintenance checklist on hand. Um, you will also need this because this is where we're going to put some of the screws that we're going to remove. And finally, uh, in, the, in the system itself, there's a few other things that will come in handy. So if you look in MSL staff, in alignments, there's one folder for every week that I've done the alignment, and inside each of the folders, there's a notes file. So the notes file, I always copy it to the, to the day that I'm doing the alignment. I open that up, which is here. And the nice thing is this, this has the conditions that I always use for the alignment, so it reminds me to check whether everything's okay. So I use the 2x objective, a 3.2 zoom, with the corrected dipping cap, the correction collar 3.5, the aperture fully open. Uh, the aperture, by the way, is this. The correction collar, you now is this. I use 20% sheet width and 20 milliseconds for exposure. It's a good idea to keep using those just because uh, that'll make it easier to determine whether the, the intensities of, uh, that we're getting are way off. I'm going to change the exposure right now to 20 milliseconds before I forget. And the other nice thing about this is it gives me a list of all the things that I need to check. Uh, and I mark them uh, if there's anything uh, that's more than sort of 10% off. And I also make notes if I see anything uh, that's weird. So uh, with that, a few things that we need to do on the system itself. To do the alignment, uh, there's a way of doing it without removing uh, many things, uh, but I want to show you the light path and also if you want to do it sheet by sheet, you actually have to remove these covers. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. So the covers that I need to remove are this one. This is a good opportunity to check that this part is clean. This is the part that usually, I'm sorry, this is the part that usually gets dirty, DBE, and I need to remove the same on this side. Before I forget, I'm going to secure the sample, the Allen wrench, gray stage plate. There's a few other things I need to move out of the way. So this plate, I use the number two key and I remove three of the screws so that I have access to some of the alignment screws for the system. So I'm gonna remove these three. I'm gonna do something very similar on the other side. Move that out of the way. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side and then I'll show you what this looks like from the top. Okay. So this is the system inside in all its glory. Um, these are the neutral density wheel and filter wheels. If you have excitation filters on your system, this controls the width of the light sheet. There's a mirror here, you kind of see it there at the back along this rail, that flips into and out of position when you switch from left and right light sheet. So if it's in position, the light will go bounce off that mirror come to this mirror and then move this way. Uh, these are things that reflect part of the light. So 100% of the light comes here, then it reflects this way. Then about a third, though not quite, goes that way. Two thirds go that way of the, of, you know, the light that goes that way. Half it bounces off this one, half bounces off that one. This is the thing that controls the horizontal focus by moving around uh, on some rails. Inside here, you will see that there are uh, some little pieces of glass that are moving constantly like this. 
uh, that reduces interference patterns. And in here, we have the cylindrical lenses that make the light sheet itself. And the same thing on the other side. There's this main mirror. If the light is going to the, uh, to the right light sheet, it goes here, bounces off, and the combination of these sends about a third uh, to three paths. So the way the system works is you either use the right light sheet or the left light sheet. And each of them has three beams, one in the middle and then two lateral ones that come in at an angle. So what are we trying to accomplish with the alignment? What we're trying to accomplish is the following. First, we want to make sure that um, where the software thinks the horizontal focus is, so where the, the waist of the light sheet is, is actually where the horizontal focus is. Let me show you um, something that I've pulled up here from my guide. This is a XZ view of the light sheet. If you think the horizontal focus is there, if it is, you're fine. That's where you're gonna get the, the finest Z resolution. But if it's not, you think it's there, you're gonna get poorer resolution because there's gonna be a mismatch to where the light sheet waist is thinnest and where the software thinks it's thinnest. So that's one of the things that we're trying to accomplish in the alignment. And that part of it is done in the software with a calibration parameter uh, or slider. But there are other things that we need to do that we have to do by fiddling with screws on the system itself. So those are the following. We want the light sheets to be centered in the Y dimension. So the light sheets go into the sample like this, this or this, um, and they can be shifted in Y. So we want them to be centered. That's one thing that, that we want. Uh, we want that for all three of the sheets. Another thing we want is for given a, a position in Z of the sheet in the middle on the right side, which is our reference sheet, the other light sheets need to be in the same Z position. If they are not, that's going to completely screw up the Z resolution of the system. So if this one is in a particular plane in Z, the others have to be in the same plane as well. In addition, on the left, we also want the horizontal focus to be where it actually is, so the software has to actually ac accurately reflect what's going on in the system. We also want the Y to be in the middle for all light sheets. We also want the two lateral sheets to be in the same Z position as the center one. And then there's one more requirement, which is that we want all of the ones on the left to be in the same Z plane as all the ones on the right. So the way we're going to accomplish that is by moving some of the, the screws on these mirrors. Specifically, the mirror on the top will control all of these sheets, and we're going to use it to control the sheet in the middle. We never want to touch any of the, any of the settings on the sheet in the middle. So we're going to use this one, which affects all of them at the same time. Once we fix that one, we are going to adjust settings on these two, and then we're gonna to go to the left and adjust settings on this, which affects all the left sheets, and then these two lateral ones. To keep things uh, sort of comprehensible, when we do that, we will use these business cards to block the paths of all the sheets except the ones we care about. So I usually start by blocking the paths of all except the sheet in the middle. in both cases. All right. Um, so let's, now that we have everything blocked, let's turn on the laser and try and uh, find uh, the calibration tool. So for that, uh, let me show you what the calibration tool looks like so you can understand what we're looking for um, in, the, in, in the reservoir. So, I have placed on our computer inside MSL staff instructions. And there are two that are relevant now. One is called alignment of the ultra microscope with the alignment tool from LaVision. And the other is called manual UM. So uh, they both cover the same thing, except one was written by LaVision, the other is written by me. Um, 
this just shows sort of the optical setup. Let me see if they have a picture of the cuvette here. So I can show you what it looks like. Right, so the cuvette inside looks kind of like that. Um, I have in my instructions, it's just a diagram of this. So, so the cuvette is, it's a little sort of slit that's six microns in height. And it's about 30 microns thick, which is not here. And so it's like this distance here is 30 microns. This distance is 30 microns. Uh, this is actually not to scale. This is about 140, and then this is about 60. Uh, in any case, it's, a, it's basically a small hole, and then this kind of X pattern. Uh, this blocks light quite effectively. Uh, so light will only go through this if it intersects with one of the holes. And the idea is that by using this uh, properly, what we can check is whether uh, light sheets are aligned uh, in the center of Y, uh, whether the horizontal focus is where we think the horizontal focus should be, uh, and whether different sheets are aligned relative to each other uh, in the same Z plane, okay? So uh, let's go back. To inspector, uh, click on the green channel, uh, so 561, click on video, and look in the system itself. So I'm going to turn off the light. So we can see the light sheet. First of all, if we check here, we see that uh, the light in the, in the middle sheet is going through. It's not you know, blocked in any way like this. You can see here, uh, it's just hitting one side. And so we need to navigate in the, uh, in the cuvette and try and find that hole. And so you can see now, it's not quite in focus. Let me see if I can get that better in focus. But there's a line. And in fact, if, if you were here with me on the system, you'd notice that it's actually two lines. It's possible that now you can let's see. There we go. So you might be able to see that those are two lines, but if I move them in the Z dimension, that they disappear. And then here I'm completely above the, um, the place where that sheet of metal blocks light. And then if I go in the other direction, I have two uh, of the lines, and then at some point they disappear and I have one. Uh, so the reason for that can be shown in this graph. So if we are, if we're completely outside of this, it doesn't block it, so that's when we see the whole uh, sheet going through the entire cuvette. But if we're being blocked by that piece of metal, if we're above where that, uh, let's call it the pinhole is, we'll see two lines, like this. So this is a, a Z, Y view, so it's basically looking at the cuvette from this side and looking at that plane. That's what this is. Uh, and then this here is a top view, so it's an X, Y view. So if we're in a situation like this, we'll see two lines. If we move in Z, so this thing goes up or down, and then eventually we can intersect the sheet with the, with the calibration tool, and then we see one line, okay? So a lot of what we're gonna do is based on kind of this idea uh, right here. All right, so again, if we're not in the Z where it goes through the middle, it'll look like two lines. If we are going through the middle, it'll look like one line. So let's use this to start uh, our alignment. So I'm gonna go back to live. I am going to rotate the objective into the working position, start at a low zoom, 0 0.63, and lower this until it's close to touching and then very carefully monitor on the screen for which I'm going to click the sort of icon with the little moon and the stars, which is an auto contrast. And I'm just gonna lower this, adjust that again, keep lowering it. And there we go. So I wanna get this really nice and in focus. So you can see the two lines there uh, importantly, I want to center this. So 
So I'm going to put the crosshair on, which is this button. Move this in the Y dimension. That up there. You can see that um, this gap is narrow, excuse me, this gap is narrower than this gap, meaning things are tilted. Uh, that's easier to notice sometimes if you use an increased sheet width. You can see it's slightly tilted, so I'm going to grab a Kim wipe and then tilt this a little bit until on the screen, you can see it's a little bit straighter. So that looks a little bit better. Not perfect, but a little bit better. And that looks acceptable. So I'm going to now move it there and lower the sheet width to 20. And now center it as best as I can. So this is good enough for now. Uh, I, I always perform the alignment at a zoom of 3.2. So let's go up and zoom to 3.2. You can see we've fallen out of focus, that's typical. And we've also drifted a little bit in um, the X and Y dimensions. That's also typical because it's not perfectly centered. I'm going to rotate this away from me. And as I do that, this comes into focus and then it goes out of focus again. So I just want it as crisply in focus as I can. I'm going to adjust this by moving it a little bit. And because it's too bright, I'm going to hit uh, the auto adjust button. There we go. So I can see it's a little bit blurry. I'm going to adjust the focus as best as I can. What I'm looking for when I adjust the focus is, you know, general sharpness, but also the right edge of this should be really sharp. And so now the way I, I, I do, uh, I, I, I start things is I make sure that that right edge there is right flush against uh, that line. And then I move in the Z dimension. So I'm moving this knob to go in Z. I move in the direction where they get closer. At some point they'll disappear and then a single line reappears. And so that's because what I was doing, uh, where am I, here we go. What I was doing is moving the sheet from here to here. So I had two, they came together. Um, actually this gap is a little bit bigger. So at some point the sheet can be in a place where there's no holes. So that's why it disappeared and then it went to this. Okay, so again, we're, we have one, if I move away in Z by click, by moving this, it'll disappear and then we'll get two. And so what I want is one perfectly aligned against this and then perfectly centered in Y. So in X, I want that right edge to be right flush against the line. In Y, I want it centered here, which it is. And then in Z, I want it at the maximal point. And so uh, that can be a little bit tricky. Uh, not sure what happened there. Uh, that can be a little bit tricky to, um, to get right. So what I do is I click on this ROI button. Sometimes you've got to click twice. And then I make an ROI that sort of has that general shape, I right click and I show, I say add X. So what it's gonna do, it's gonna add along the X dimension and show me a plot along the Y, which is this here. So this is a, a line profile along here, except it just summed all along these lines. I find it also useful if we right click on the graph to show uh, analysis, show grid, because then I know where the zero is kind of see it right there and so it just makes it easier to see if things are centered which they seem to be pretty well and now what I can do is by moving the Z this right here this number is how bright it is that's the pixel intensity of this uh, of this beam of light so I want that number to be as high as possible and the way I'm going to change that is by moving first the Z so as I move the Z, I can move it by hand. I can see, okay, that goes down. Uh, it's 
lights up. So that's about as high as I can get it by hand. The other way of doing it is if you go down here, instead of using the joystick, using the mouse wheel, and then if you actually literally just turn this a little bit, every click that you turn moves it just a tiny bit. So it, it gives you a little bit finer control. So there I'm going in the wrong direction. And so I'm, I'm able to get to you know, 4,300 in this case. And, and these numbers vary quite a bit, um, but they're typically around 4,000. So if you see that this number is way higher or way lower, uh, you should check first that you're, you've got your settings right. So laser power at 10%, the highest in A, sheet width at 20, exposure time at 20, that you have your zoom at 3.2. Uh, and if they're still way off, then there's something weird that changed about the system. So I'm going to tell the system that I'm using a zoom of 3.2, because that's what I'm doing. And now I'm going to kind of really actually start the alignment by clicking on the horizontal focus tool. Uh, so this shows me where the waste of the light sheet is, or at least where the software thinks it is. So if it's true that the waste of the light sheet is there, that means that if I move this a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right, um, I will have less light going through the pinhole, so this intensity should go down. If that's the case, then it's perfectly aligned. We don't need to do anything. If I move this bow tie in either direction and this intensity goes up, so basically if the sheet gets brighter, that means that this was not actually in the middle. So the effect of adjusting the horizontal focus is something that's illustrated partially in this figure. So on the right, you see the horizontal focus uh, is kind of in the right position. So most of the light goes through the pinhole. Whereas on this one, uh, the horizontal focus is shifted such that the focal position in the Z is offset in X. So that a lot of the light ends up going through the, the other apertures. Now there's an intermediate case, which is if this gets bigger, but it hasn't yet hit the, these X markings, then you'll just get less intensity because more of it ends up hitting uh, this sort of the, the part of the alignment tool that doesn't let light through. So let me illustrate this from an inspector. So if I grab the horizontal focus and I move it way off, eventually what we're gonna see, let me adjust it so that you can see it, are multiple sheets. As I move it, again, and the reasoning is this, it's going to go through the middle one and the two lateral ones. Then as I get closer, those side sheets disappear. And eventually I'm basically left with the middle one getting stronger and stronger. And so what we're trying to do now, before we make any adjustments to the horizontal focus, is to check whether if I move that slightly to each side, whether this number gets lower. So if I move it to the right, it gets lower. In the center, it was about 4,300. If I move it to the left, it also gets lower. So that means that this on this side is really well aligned and we don't really have to do anything. Now, if this were not the case, what we need to do is position it in the center, go to advanced, and then grab this, which maybe not grab, just click on it, and then move the scroll wheel of the mouse gently and watch how these numbers change. And we sort of should sort of stop when it's at the maximum here and then click on save settings there, okay? Uh, with a little luck, we'll have to do that with the left light sheet and you'll actually see this in, in action. Okay, um, the other thing is that if we're in a situation where we need to move this uh, excuse me, not this, move the uh, sheet motor calibration to get a higher number here. Once we get to the highest number we can, it's a good idea to tweak the Z position by using mouse wheel and moving it up to increase this and do it iteratively. So moving the sheet motor calibration to get a brighter light sheet by checking here. Once we get to the brightest that we can, moving the Z to get a brighter light sheet by checking here and then repeating that until we get to the highest possible value. At that point, everything is gonna be really nicely aligned for that particular sheet, which again, in this case, is that middle sheet. 
All right, so that's the, the horizontal focus on the right side. What's next? So what's next is to check whether the Y position is appropriate. So the Y position refers to, you know, the, the sheet, when you, when you lower the sheet width, the sheet has a lot of power in the middle. This has a certain sort of uh, kind of power distribution. It should be centered here in, in, in sort of the middle of the Y. So to check that, I'm gonna move this box uh, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger, all the way to the bottom. Oh, I moved it instead of resizing it. Here we go. Okay, so there it's resized. And so now you can see it's, it's pretty well centered. Uh, I always check by looking at the position of those squares. If they intersect with the line, that's sort of good enough. And so now, if you look here, you'll see that the area on the curve it's almost symmetrical. So it's a little bit shifted to the right. So this is the middle here where I'm positioning here. There's a little bit more area to the right. So it could use a minor tweak. So how do we tweak this? Um, so to tweak that, we need to adjust this mirror here. Okay. So let's talk about how to adjust the mirrors. So this diagram in my um, alignment document shows all the mirrors. And so the one we need to adjust first is RA. If we look at these from the side, um, we can see that, uh, and this is the left side, we can see that each mirror has a bunch of holes where you can kind of put things through. And the mirrors actually look like this, uh, all of them. So they have, um, kind of like axes, this screw controls the Z position of the sheet that hits the mirror. This screw controls the Y position. So we basically need to use this screw on uh, the right side. So let, let me show you where that is. So if we look here, you'll see um, this is the mirror that we need to adjust. There's a hole uh, there, there's one down here, and there's one down there that connect inside with the screw there, in the middle, and at the top. So this one we don't want to ever touch. The ones we want to touch are this one or this one. This is to touch Z. Um, we, we, I, I never use that screw uh, because this is the reference sheet, but I will use it in the other ones. This is to adjust Y. So the one we want to adjust is the Y one, which is a two millimeter uh, hex key. Um, so let me do that and let me show you what the effects are. So the idea, again, if we go back to Inspector, is, uh, I'll turn this back on, be aware that when you turn the 561 laser on, which I shouldn't have actually turned off, uh, the intensity tends to flicker for a few seconds and the alignment can shift in Y, which is incredibly annoying uh, and it's consistently annoying. This always happens. Uh, so the alignment in the Y dimension of this uh, system, uh, when you lower the sheet width, is actually very poor. It's not very reproducible. Uh, it shifts a lot, as you can see here. And so the, the solution is to just uh, do our best, but also to, um, to leave the 561 laser on for a while. That tends to stabilize it at least. But it, this is one of the most unreliable things about the alignment, the, the position in Y. And so this doesn't really affect that many people because people usually use the sheet width at 100%. But if someone is doing something at high magnification, they're trying to get as much power as possible and aligning this uh, to get as much power in the middle as they can, even a, sh a slight um, change in this can have you know big big consequences for them. So you can see now, quite annoyingly, Instead of being shifted on that side, so, so instead of the right side being bigger, the left side is bigger. So this is, again, super annoying. Uh, I've never understood why this is so unreliable, but it is. In any case, it is what it is, so we need to uh, deal with it. And so the way we're going to deal with it is we're going to grab the two millimeter wrench. So I have it in my hand here. And we're going to insert it here, in this hole right there. So you can see if you look from the top, that is inserted into the hole at the bottom right of that mirror. So now what I'm going to do is very, very gently turn this 
And while I'm turning it, I'm gonna look on the screen to see what happens to that light sheet. So hopefully you can see that. If I turn this, that clockwise moves it to the left, counterclockwise moves it to the right. And I'm kind of looking for symmetry here. And I made very, very small turns, not even a quarter of a turn or not even an eighth of a turn, maybe a sixteenth or something. That looks pretty symmetrical. So that's done. That's good. So now what we need to do is make sure that the other sheets are also properly aligned in Y and make sure that they have the same uh, Z position as the reference sheet, which is the middle one, which I've been controlling with this mirror that controls all of them, okay? I'm gonna take this out. Before we do that, and this is a good idea to do periodically, let's put um, the region of interest here. Let's check what this number is and make sure that we are in the Z plane where this is maximal. So I'm going to double click here and then move the mouse wheel to move in Z so I can get that number to be as high as possible. So we need to move the mouse wheel when it's positioned here. So let's see, so that's going in the wrong direction. And so now what used to be a peak at 4,300 is now down to 3,300. And this is, again, uh, this is something that happens during the alignment, um, super annoying, but there's not much we can do about it. Okay, in any case, that's where the maximum is. Let's now look back here stretch this out and you can see you know, I mean, we didn't change anything so it's still symmetrical let's see now uh, if the other light sheets are symmetrical so if I go here and I do this I will have blocked the middle one and now the one that comes from the top is the only one remaining which is one that angles in the sample this way so it should be the one angling southwest and indeed, that's what we see. You can see here that as far as the Y alignment of that sheet goes, it's perfect. So it's not, there's no mismatch in the Y alignment between this one and the reference sheet. Let's try the other one. So now I've blocked the middle. Be careful when you block the middle, not to block the main one over here. Uh, so now this one is going through, that should be the sheet that angles northwest. So you can see that here. You can see this sheet is brighter. Uh, so it used to be on this system that the middle sheet was the brightest one, but uh, for reasons I've never understood, that changed a few weeks ago when I changed uh, this part of the system. That doesn't make any sense. That has nothing to do uh, with the mirrors. I think I must have, you know, something must have moved slightly. Um, and so that's why it's no longer the case that the middle one is the brightest one. Rather, it's this, uh, this one that points northwest. In any case, uh, we're paying, right now we're trying to figure out if the Y positioning is appropriate. And you can see that it's, it's a little bit shifted to the right. Um, so we want to adjust that a little bit so it's properly centered. So again, I'm gonna use the two millimeter tool here. The sheet I want to adjust is this one. I wanna insert it. If this is the, this is the Z, this is the X, that's the Y, I'm gonna insert it in this hole. And you can see, hope, oh, oh. there we go, that went in. So now if I turn this, I will adjust that. So let's see, if I turn it counterclockwise, it goes to the left. And I'm gonna just adjust a little bit clockwise, kind of finesse it. Again, these are minor adjustments. That looks pretty good. Okay, so now we have all three symmetrical in the Y. Uh, now we need to check whether they are in the same position in Z. All right, so for them to be in the same position in Z, they have to, the intensity has to be maximal uh, for all three at once. So I always like to go back to the middle one. go so you can 
see that only the middle one is going in. You can see that perfectly here. I like clicking here or double clicking there and then moving slightly and keeping track of that number. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna move in Z with the scroll wheel and keep track of that number. Now it's lower and it's maxing out at about 3,600 right now. So that's the middle. So we know that the, this reference sheet is in the middle. So now we need to check whether the other ones are in the middle. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna grab this other uh, Allen key, which is a 1.5. And now we're gonna start fiddling with the Z. So I'm going to, I know the middle is in position. I'm gonna look at this one, place this here. It's the Z, that's the screw that controls the Z. It has a little bit of give to it. Um, so you have to be a little bit careful. Uh, we have another uh, Allen wrench that fits snugly. If you prefer that one, use it. It's in the same drawer. Uh, I, I'm used to this one, so I, I know how much give it has, uh, and I just use that one. All right, so what, what are we trying to do? We're trying to make this number right here, which is the brightness of this sheet, as, as high as possible by moving this. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. We're starting at 1,200. And so I'm going to adjust that, and you can see that went down. That's not good. I want to go in the other direction. 1200, and it's back to less than 1200. So what I need is to leave it at 1200. So it was perfect. I just got it back to perfect. Now we need to do the same thing for the other sheet, the one that angles northwest. This here. See it there. The reason I put this like so instead of this way is because this gives me a bigger lever, uh, sort of lever arm. So small adjustments here are very, very fine adjustments. Whether whereas in this one, a small change here uh, corresponds to a much bigger adjustment here than if we do it when we're in this position. So it just gives me finer control because this is much longer. So let's try this one. This one is starting at 4,500-ish. I'm going to adjust the position and see what I can get away with here. So the highest I seem to have been able to do was 4,600. So it was pretty close. Okay. So there I've managed to adjust it. Now I'm gonna go back to the middle one. Sorry bumping into stuff. There's a lot going on here. I'm going to the middle one, make sure that this is still in its maximal position. Again, I'm going to double click here. And while I move the scroll wheel hovering above this, you can see the arrows change. I'm going to keep track of that number up there. And indeed, it was at 3600. So it was really or about there. So uh, yeah, that looks good. So really we didn't need to do much. We only made a, a slight adjustment in the Y on one of the sheets. So if I go to my notes on alignment, uh, we did uh, a little bit of adjustment on the Y on the right sheet. We didn't have to adjust the sheet motor calibration. So the horizontal focus was what it was supposed to. The Z of the right sheets was perfect. And then uh, the Y of the right sheets, one of them we did have to adjust. Uh, we frequently have to adjust all of them, all of these parameters. So the, the alignment drifts a lot, particularly it seems like if, if the temperature is changing a lot, it moves, uh, which is not surprising given these are all a piece of metal that uh, expand and contract with temperature. Um, so it's not atypical that you have to move everything. But if you have to move them by more than a quarter of a turn, you should make a note of it because that means that something, something, something's wrong. Either you made a mistake or uh, the alignment really shifted significantly. Okay, so we're, we're centered in, uh, in Z, uh, 
with the right sheet. Now we gotta go and, and check the left sheet. And so on the left sheet, if I click here, you can see that it starts uh, and, and already we know that things are off. So you can see there's two lines or there should be one. That means the Z is way off. And the horizontal focus also, it always starts kind of off in the software. So let's just put it back to the middle and now deal with this. So you can see uh, we are definitely not where we need to be. So I'm gonna shift this here hit this button so we can see them a little bit clear. We're not supposed to have two sheets here. We're supposed to have one and it's supposed to be really bright. So that means the Z is way off. Okay, so remember, we go here. This one, that's the left sheet, should be in the same position as the right sheet. If it were, then we would see when the right sheet is in the middle, we should see one line the left sheet should also be in the middle, we should see one line going in the other direction. Instead, we see two. So the Z is way off, so we need to adjust the Z of the left light sheet. We're gonna do it with, again, our 1.5 millimeter tool, which I'm going to insert here. All right, and then I'm going to look at this and see how much of an adjustment I need to make. So I had to do an almost half a turn to get it properly set up. And so this is not unheard of, it's pretty annoying. Again, uh, alignment, a lot of things during the alignment are annoying. It's not unheard of, but uh, you can see that this would have caused some significant problems if someone were doing left and light and right light sheet imaging and they were looking at very fine structures they might not appear in the same plane um, so this is kind of a big deal all right so that seems to be as bright as i can get it try a little bit more so when the right light sheet was around 3600 the left one was around 3000 now we want to do this other check which is let me just adjust intensity so we can see things a little bit more clearly. Um, I want to see if I move this, the horizontal focus, does the intensity change? So in one direction it goes down, in the other direction it also goes down. So it seems the horizontal focus is pretty good. We don't have to really adjust it. Um, it's maxed out where it's supposed to be maxed out, which is when it's in the middle. Again, if it weren't, you would click here move the scroll wheel until it was maxed out, and then you would readjust the Z using this until that was maxed out, and you would iterate. You would adjust the horizontal focus, the Z, the horizontal focus, the Z until it was maxed out. Um, that doesn't appear necessary because the horizontal focus is fine. Now, because uh, as time goes by, things sometimes drift, let's go back to the right light sheet and check that this is still in the middle. So I'm gonna move this here. That number is now 3,200, but again, that number changes a lot. So we need to just do a quick check by double clicking here and moving the scroll wheel up and down and just seeing, can we get to anything higher? So 3,300, so it's pretty much in the middle. Let's go to the left light sheet, put that there. We're at 3,200, let me adjust this and see if I can get anything better than that. In one direction it went actually down and yeah, 3,200 seems to be like, that's the sweet spot. Let's see if I can get it back to it. Okay, so that's about as good as I can do. Make a small tweak here. It's about as good as I can do. All right, so what this means is the left light sheet has a proper horizontal focus and a proper Z position. So now what we need to do is check the Y of the left light sheet. So let's check that. All right, so you can see it's not symmetric. That's the zero right there. So we need to adjust the Y of the left light sheet. So we're gonna do that with this other tool, the two millimeter one and it's going to be inserted into this hole. Again, down from the Z, 
it's uh, the x hole, which we never want to touch. So that's z, that's x, we never want to touch that. And then this is y. You can see it's inserted in there into this mirror that controls all of the left light sheets. Now I'm going to turn this uh, and see if I can get that a little bit more centered. So. So that looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna double check that that didn't screw something else up. So I'm gonna go back to the right light sheet, make sure that the right light sheet is at its maximum. So right now the intensity is 3700. I'm just moving it in Z. 3700 it seems max, so that's good. It was at max and let's look at the left light sheet. And so this one's at 3,200. Let's see if we can improve on that, again, by adjusting this screw. That's the Z. So we want to see if we can improve upon 3,200. So in one direction, we definitely can't. And in the other one, we can't either. So that's kind of as good as it's going to get. Let's see if I can get back to that. Sometimes easier said than done. Okay, there we go. So now we know that the left light sheet, the middle one, has a proper horizontal focus, a proper Z position, meaning it's uh, aligned with the right light sheet, and the Y is centered. So now we need to check the other two lateral sheets on the left. So I'm gonna start by checking their Y. And again, there's three sheets, right? All of them on the left come through this one. This is the middle one, the one we're evaluating at present, but there's two more, these two. Um, we need to check them to see if they're aligned in Y and whether they're aligned in Z to the middle one. So, there we go. Now we'll have the sheet that points northeast. So, how's it doing in the Y dimension? Uh, it's a little bit asymmetrical, so I'm going to get my two millimeter uh, Allen key. That's the Z. That's the X, I don't want to touch that, that's the Y. I'm going to insert here. I'm going to insert, if you can see that, into this mirror. And I'm going to adjust it. So if I move it counterclockwise, it goes to the right. If I move it clockwise, it goes to the left. I overshot. Let me see if I can get it just right. That looks pretty symmetrical. Now let's just confirm. Here's the middle one. That looks symmetrical. Now let's look at the right one. Excuse me, the uh, the top one. So that's this one. Let me take that out. And you can see that one looks symmetrical. So the Y all looks good. Now let's do uh, the final adjustment, which is the Z. So let's go to the middle. So now we have that one. And let's center it. I'm moving this. So now that I know that the left and right are aligned to each other, I can move the Z of the left uh, without too much problem. I just want to make sure that I was in uh, the center position. So I move this until this is maximal, which is at 3000, which is where I was. So all is good. And so now what I'm going to do is switch to this light sheet, which is now at 1600. You can see the intensities are quite different. Put the Z, uh, the key that controls the Z screw there, uh, there uh, and then move it and see if I can get better than 1600. So I could, I, I got to about 1800, so that means that I improved upon the Z alignment of that sheet. Now I'm going to do the same for the other one. There, insert this here. Okay, and we're at uh, 2400, I think we can do way better than that. So let's see that prediction. So not in that direction, clearly. Let's see if in the other direction. There we go, that's way better. So we can get up to 37, maybe even 3800 if I do this carefully. There we go. Okay. Let's do one last check. This is at 3,000. This is at 3,300, so uh, nothing seems to have changed. 
Now if I remove these, I have three sheets and you can see the top one is the brightest one, then the middle, then the, uh, the one that points southeast. That's always been the case on the system. If I remove these and I switch to the right light sheets, you can see if I move this over here, that we have the one that points northwest is the biggest one then the middle and the other. So it used to be that the middle was the brightest one, but that changed again when I adjust, when I swapped this, uh, actually this piece right here, and I think it was just because some mirror is now slightly in a different position. Uh, and uh, yeah, there's some light loss somewhere that I don't understand. Okay, um, so the alignment looks great. Um, that I believe, let me check my notes, concludes what we want to do. The only final thing is I, I like to uh, kind of write down what we had to adjust. So the Y on the left, we had to adjust. The Z on the left, we had to adjust a lot. Half a turn. The sheet color calibration was fine. The lateral, yes, very little, but yes. And the Y, yes, very little. But yes, and the major changes in alignment persist on the right side. The center sheet is no longer the brightest. That's what it says here. Um, I'm going to save this. So uh, one of the things that you should be aware of is that when you when you put these plates back on, you want to be very careful because they can knock that carefully uh, done alignment uh, out of position. So what I do is I turn uh, the system on. And while monitoring the screen, I very gently put these on. And what I'm looking at is to make sure, not, not that the, the sample can sometimes move, that's okay. Uh, but I want, what I want is um, for this arrangement of things, so the fact that the northwest one is brightest, the other one is here, the other one's there, that should stay the same. And there shouldn't be one of them that has two, for example, or three, because uh, that would tell us that we have a major problem. Um, so let me do that. Um, let's see if I'll, I'll leave this on the screen and I'll put the right one in. So hopefully you should see just a minor shift. So you can see there was a slight shift of the sample in the Y dimension, but really not much else happened, so that's good. And then I'm going to put the left one on. So I'm going to switch to the left light sheet. And again, just checking by moving this here, that when I put the, the lid on, that I don't screw up the, the line that I just spent some time making carefully. OK, so that clearly had a more dramatic effect. Let's see. I think it probably knocked it out in the Z dimension. So let's see if I move it in Z. Okay, so uh, that's as bright as it's gonna get in the, in the Z. Let's move back to this one here. So that actually had a big effect. Um, I seem to have knocked it out of alignment in the Z dimension. So let's see if I can get it back really quickly. So what I'm doing is checking the position of the Z where it's maximal on the right light sheet. And then I'm just going to try and get it in the same position with the left. Wow, that was a big effect. So this is, usually, this is atypical. I haven't really seen this happen much. Um, so let me see if I can get it back in here. Uh, and I'm really tracking that middle one. Now you'll notice that I can do this uh, because I haven't yet zipped it up uh, and it doesn't matter whether the lid is there. What I can't do is block individual ones with the cards, but that's okay. Uh, this, what, what happened was an, an adjustment in Z. So what I'm trying to do is just to get it back to where it's maximal. So that appears to be maximal. It's at 3,600, which is as high as I can get it. If I switch to the right light sheet, double check that that's in the center. 
that's at 4,200. That should be 3,600. So now we're back. And so you can see how important that check was because if not, we would have you know, done all the alignment and uh, we would have had the left light sheet completely off in Z. So um, now what I'm going to do is zip up uh, these screws, which I have here. So on both on you know, this plate and the equivalent one on the right side. And at that point, uh, we've concluded the alignment.